So you said something that kind of caught my attention. You said, you know, I forget how you put it, but you mentioned the word belief, you know, and, and, and I think that when I get into spiritual circles, a lot of people are talking about, well, we have this true nature that's beyond personality, that's beyond individuality. But, you know, when we get together in a confrontation group, no one has had that experience yet. And so do you see spirit, the spiritual path as involving some level of belief that you have to take on faith that there's uh, something to be found? Or do you kind of not worry about the end goal and just go through the process? What's the role of belief in someone thinking that it's possible to even have a realization of some kind? You know, Ro I think Ro Rose's take was that, well, you need to believe that it's possible for you. I, I like that expression. But I would, I would add that if you can connect with what you really want and what you really desire, it does not matter if you believe that you can do it or not, you will try. Because the desi your desire is your fuel for moving through life, for, for ex exploration, for discovery. Uh, you know, if the word desire doesn't connect with you, then then uh, Rose also talked about curiosity. Right? He said you had. He said a human being had two implants: curiosity and desire. And if you harness those for your path, well, there's the fuel. And so that's why I'm big on connecting with what you really want, trying to figure out what it is that you really desire. And not that it's a one and done thing. Oh yeah, now I got my true desire and then here I go. It evolves, it changes, it becomes more clear as you move through the, move through the path. But uh, you know, the, 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 the stereotypical images of the inventor in their basement, right? They don't, they don't care whether uh, they just, you, they have to do what they're doing. The artist has to create, the inventor has to invent. The, uh, uh, you know, the, the seeker has to seek because they connected with what they truly want. Sure, they, they'll have moments of doubt, but when I when I connect, um, I move forward despite the doubt. Yeah, Sean, you wrote a book, Passages with Mike Gagenheimer. It's an introduction and commentary on Richard Rose's Albigen system. And in Passages, you have a quote from Rose saying, all that is necessary to find the truth is an unconditional commitment. And then he goes on to say, all energies must give priority to this. Every hour must be used in a way to expedite the success, which makes it seem particularly urgent. That's very urgent. And then, you know, I've heard you talk about how you were kind of a low passion kind of person. And also in subtraction, one of your spiritual first aid elements, you talk about something called treading water which is basically like hanging around, even if your hair is not on fire. I just wanted to know if you could kind of talk about, it seems like kind of a tension between the two of those. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, especially as you're saying, we're talking about desire, talking about, and I'm trying to communicate a feeling of what I truly want. Uh, and that gives the, that certainly gives the impression that Hey, yeah, I come connected with my desire. I'm going to run out the front door, and and uh, I'm just going to be this explosive spiritual seeker who 24/7 is doing everything possible to figure out whatever, however your question arises. You know, who am I? What happens after death, etc. Uh, 
yeah the the reality of the daily ups and downs of the search is different than that but i also think that the 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 reality of how desire and connecting with desire manifest in our lives is it is it's more like a slow burn you know it's more like a slow burn and and the search is like adding bits of little bits of kindling to a fire and that fire is just being slowly stoked as time goes by um you know one of my mentors augie turak he used to talk about inspiration he'd say yeah you know inspiration's great you get inspired he said it's like a toilet paper fire you know you light a piece of toilet paper and it just goes up whoosh and it was really awesome for a second and it's over so what do you how 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 do you use the inspiration to actually do something accomplish something well then you get into uh, how do you use how do you find a group that supports you when you're feeling low energy and so forth? But uh, but yeah, on a on a daily basis, my search. I was always lamenting. I don't feel like I'm uh, powerful enough. I don't feel like I'm intense enough. I don't feel like I'm like my hair is on fire like the you know the zen parable of you should seek like your hair's on fire i never felt i very rarely felt that way i just felt like it was a slog that i had something that i really wanted to know and all that i knew how to do was just to keep trying and so that's what i did just day in day out what can I accomplish today? What can I do today, given how I feel, where I am, the circumstances? How can I make the most of wherever I am? Does that, did that get at your question? I may have lost the thread of it. No, I think so. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I guess just like, what would you say are some touchstones? Like, somebody who's not feeling like their hair is on fire. And, you know, you talked about in your book, I think you said to Rose, like, if there was anything else that I would be doing, I'd be doing that, but there isn't anything. <laughs> so you, Which you is, just, it's, I'm, yeah, you just bring <laughs> back that moment instantly of, of standing in that. <laughs> I was so depressed. And I think it was even, it was cold and snowing, I think, when I had that interaction with him. And uh, yeah, I just, I poured out my heart to him about how exactly what you said, Mr. Rose, if there was anywhere I, I could go, I would, and he just kind of chuckled and started talking about something else. What I mean, can I just ask, uh, I don't want to harp on this for too long, but it's just, I don't know, I'm just maybe I'm getting too personal because I've been at this for a little while myself and I'm right now I'm not feeling like my hair is on fire. I wouldn't say that, but I also relate to what you said about like, I've looked at everything and I'm just like, there's nothing that's, I can't see anything, but I'm just wondering, what do you recommend to people? Like, what what are some things you can keep doing? If you to tread water, you know, or mm -hmm. do new or. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's uh, on you know on a practical level, it's all it's certainly very important to have friends on the path, and to have people that you can actually share how you're feeling with versus keeping it all bottled up. Uh, that's helpful because like with Rose, a lot of times if we can e express our frustrations, they sort of evaporate. But if if you if you're kind of person who you get frustrated or depressed and you isolate, that can, you know, that's kind of a, this loop, self-perpetuating loop, and it can get beat on itself. 
So if you can find a way to break that little isolation habit, that will often help just on a practical level. Um, you know, there were certain touchstones that I, I pretty much always kept up with some kind of meditation, even when I didn't feel like it. And my, you know, I would sit and it would be as dry as dust. Like this just, I don't want to be sitting. I don't want to be sitting in silence. Do it anyway. And, uh, and then of course, books. Always good to keep uh, an ear out for something new and, uh, and being open to recommendations from other people. Cause sometimes those are like, I think sometimes they're little gifts from the universe. Somebody mentions a book, you know, like, ah, whatever, another book, right? But <laughs> some page in it, some phrase, like sparks of curiosity again. And considering things that you you didn't consider before, like Douglas Harding was that way for me. You know, Douglas Harding, in retrospect, was an important person for me to meet. I would never have met him if I hadn't have been in a in kind of depressed and not knowing what to do. Because I would never have uh, opened myself to, oh, I'm going to try this person that uh, doesn't have anything to do with Rose, completely different. I've read his stuff before. I didn't understand it at all. Uh, but because I was kind of at my wits end, I thought, well, why the hell not? And, and uh, I went there with Eric Clark, who may or may not be on this call. And uh, I don't remember if Eric was the guy who mentioned to talk to me or what, but we went together, right? So there's an example of, all right, I got a friend, we're gonna do this together. And that turned out to be a very, very important moment for me. Sean, I wanna ask you about something you said uh, about keep trying, I think you said, or um, you know, treading water. There's kind of a moment in your book that I think you decide you're gonna go for a million dollars. You're gonna become uh, <laughs> a, a big business success or something. And um, I've heard other people who've had spiritualizations talk about moments where they, to me, it sounds like they give up and go in a totally other direction. And on the other side of that, oftentimes is their realization, you know, afterwards. And I just wonder what you think about giving up because uh, it goes right back to your comment about if I could think of anything else to do, I would do it. And there's plenty of people who do other things and don't have realizations. So what was that moment for you? How do you see that moment in your path? What is, can you talk a little bit about giving up? The, the difficulty with talking about that part of the story is that you, you can't decide to give up. So we, we talk about letting go, giving up. You, you cannot just decide like, okay, I'm going to try this giving up thing. I'm going to try this letting go thing. It only comes about as a result of your efforts. So it's it's uh, it can't be it can't be planned. You know, I didn't. You know that part of my life. Uh, all I can say is that I was. Uh, I mean, it's it's interesting in many respects why I decided that, all right, I want to go make a lot of money now. I've been on this spiritual path for however many years, and now I want to go make a lot of money. Um, it's interesting because I pursued that, yet what was I doing every evening? I was doing spiritual stuff every evening. 
I was still living by myself. I was still, I was still living essentially a monastic life. Yet my day job, I was intent on making a lot of money. Uh, but what I was doing in the evenings was still, um, you know, I was trying to essentially uh, process and articulate my path and what had been of use to me. So had I had I given up? You know, I had come to a point in my search where I felt like uh, I'm not going to get enlightened. But because I had spent years and still believed and still felt the importance of the search and the value of the search, I wanted to communicate that to other people. And that, that's what I was doing at that time. So I, you know, what what can you say about giving up? Well, I just go I go back to just trying to be as honest as we can about what it is that we're doing, why we're doing it, what is it that we really want. And clearly, at that point in time where uh, I was quote unquote, giving up, I was still connecting with a deep desire and that desire was to help other people. Can you talk a little bit about where that came from? You know, I know Rose talks a lot about passing it on and ladder work, you know, the idea of helping other people and having a group which you've already spoken about on the spiritual path what why does communicating it seem like an important thing to you uh it, it, yeah that's funny because i i will often hey you know i i will look at people and i will think they don't they don't get they don't get the value of working with others and, uh, you know, I'm a very introverted person. I'm a very solitary person. Yet even I uh, recognize the immense value of, if, if not working with a formal group, at least having friends on the path that I could touch base with and share notes with. Um, I mean, you just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back about people that have been so important to me on my path. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't have, I wouldn't be where I am if not for so many conversations and so many moments. Uh, Yeah, and so many helpers along the way. And I'm not just talking about Richard Rose and Douglas Harding, but just all, all the people, all people I've come across and have helped me in so many ways. Um, yeah, I just, it, it, when you, You know, when you feel, right, I guess we're talking about rapport. When you have a moment of honesty and it's with another person and you, you both feel the, the, the profundity and the mystery of this life that we live and that we're, you know, the two of us, the three of us are here in this moment. And there's just this feeling that there's something so real and we're so close to it. It, just, it transcends those boundaries that we normally have. And, um, you know, just the, I don't know how to express it. Just the, the togetherness 
that we have on this path is so special. And, uh, you know, Rose would talk about the brotherhood of seekers, right? I guess it's a, it's a kind of an old timey phrase to say the brotherhood, but the, whatever you call this bond that can you get, can bring us together. Um, it's just a beautiful thing. I don't think I really, I think it drifted off from trying to be more specific, but. Um, I'm feeling it over here, Sean. Uh, you got a nice exhale out of me. Um, I'm listening to you. 